it all. I just like to say thanks for everyone who's made it here today, you know. And um, I'm a special ambassador for Malaria No More UK. And when I had the opportunity that I could speak, I thought, you know what, I'm going to share my story with everyone in here today. So, um, Malaria. I used to watch my brother train down at the local um, five-a-side pitch. Rain, wind, snow, sleet, whatever it was. When, I, when I'd see he was happy on the pitch, I thought, you know what, that, that same happiness is something that I want. At a young age, my mum, bless her, she even made a, a little CV for me. She took a photo of, with me and all my, my trophies because back then we didn't really know how you got scouted because no one, no one turned around and said, oh, this is what you got to do to, um, to become a professional. So she, she got her camera out and um, made me pose. I did several poses and, and she thought she could send it out to, uh, to clubs that way, you know, and I'm not sure it worked, to be honest with you, but it was worth a try. She was a um, sexual health advisor, so she, she always used to go over to different countries um, every couple of months just to do um, sexual health roadshows. So um, she went to Ghana and um, she caught malaria over there and, and she brought it back home with her. And um, unfortunately, the, the malaria started to, to, to tear away her body, you know. And before it was too late, you know, things, things got out of hand and she tried to go abroad for um, treatment. And um, unfortunately, uh, it, it didn't happen. I remember it there actually. I was on my way to the train station for a game that we had in the evening and uh, my stepdad rang me and was like, you know, you need to, you need to come back. And by the, just the, the tone of his voice, I could tell that it was something, it was something serious. So I rushed, I rushed back and my brothers were sat down and my aunties, my uncles were all sat down and everyone, everyone just looked like they, they, like they, they just literally had nothing left in them, you know? And, and then I knew something, something was serious. I think I was more like shocked than anything because I always used to see her as a as a strong, courageous woman, you know, who who never ever showed weakness, and she always told us you can never you can never let anyone know that you're you're hurt or you're down. Two months after, then the realization kicked in that you know, life is actually life's still moving, kind of thing. I can't just stop and and stand still. And I said to my brother, like, what are we gonna what are we actually gonna do? And he, he said to me, we're not gonna we're not gonna give up which is what most would do, and I used that as my motivation. We didn't notify the authorities because we knew what effect it would have on the, um, on the family, to be honest, and we knew that my oldest one would go into um, uh, a hostel, I think it was at the age, and then me and my middle brother would have gone into um, foster homes, and that's not something that we would have, we would have wanted, to be honest with you. So that's why we kind of thought, you know, if we keep this keep this quiet until we get to an age where we can legally fend for ourselves, then, then, it, would, um, then it would be all right. My friends would come round and um, they would just be like, oh, it's, it's nothing, I'll just put my, if it's cold, I'll just put my coat on, you know? And, um, and for food and stuff, sometimes we, we used to see um, corned beef in the supermarkets and, and sardines and stuff, which weren't too expensive. And if, if you fried it, that with rice, you know, you, you, get a, you get a good meal kind of thing. And um, after a while, it just became a normality, you know, and um, uh, it was something that we were used to. As the oldest, I felt like the, the pressure was all put on him, you know, and at, there were at times when he, he couldn't make enough money to provide for all of us. And um, it sent him down a path which, which I wouldn't wish on anyone else, you know, but that path did bring us some sort of joy because the money he was bringing was helping us um, ele put electric in the house, put heating on in the house, you know, and have having warm showers, having warm baths. But unfortunately, that the money brought obviously the, the trouble, and he ended up in prison for for a couple of years, which which isn't ideal, you know, at the end of the day. But um, but he's he's turning his life around now, you know, and and he's learnt from his mistakes, which is which is the main thing. When we used to write to each other. He always used to say, "Look, this is a, this is a waste of time being in there. It's a wa I'm just wasting years of my life," and that used to scare me the most. And I think that's what pushed me as well to 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 do better and to train to train extra hard.
In terms of my career, I'd probably say it was, a, it was a small step, but in terms of having a bit of comfortability, then it was a massive step because then we could start paying for rent without worrying. And there were things that I could do that I couldn't have done before with the income that I was getting, you know. And I didn't have a bank account until, <laughs> until I, uh, I signed with Leighton Orient. So, so those two years helped me massively. I signed the pro at Leighton Orient after my two year scholarship, which um, I, was, I was chuffed, I didn't think. I'd ever get the opportunity to, to, to sign a pro, sorry. So it was a, it, it was a big learning curve for me. And um, I was fortunate enough after that to, to go on to, to make 100, 100 odd appearances for Leighton Orient. Amazing feeling to be honest. That, leading up to that summer of that season, I had a lot of interest around me at the time. So I was always telling my agent, oh, what's going on? What's, who's coming to watch, what's happening in football. It's a, it's a short career at the end of the day. And the interest from Brentford was, was a lot. And that was a team that I, I saw myself being in and being in the championship as well was a massive, massive step up. And I thought, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna take this chance. I think that was, that was a, a, a great feeling to know that the likes of Steve Bruce and uh, his, his coaching staff admired me as a player, you know. So when I was at Brentford for only a year and, and I found that he was, he was knocking on the door, it, was, um, it just showed how far I've come since, since late in Orient, you know. And as I said before, football is, football is a very short career and um, my dream was to play in the Premier League and I felt like, oh, I had a better chance than doing that and, and, and I took it. I felt a s sort of like, I need to prove myself that I'm good enough to be around these sort of players. But I think after the, the first couple of months, I, I hit the ground running, you know, and the players start to acknowledge that, you know, we've got a, we've got a good ride back here. And my main thing was just to play as many games as possible and achieve my goal, which was to, was to um, get to the Premier League. Because that feeling when the, um, the final whistle went at Wembley and it was a, it was a great day in general, the, the sun was shining, my family came to watch. And to top it off, we, we got promotion and words can't explain how, um, how big that was. And that's still to this day, I look at the photos of us, um, of us lifting the trophy and, it, and it, it still gives me goosebumps. I think even from a past situation with my mum, I think going, being negative about something is not gonna, it's not gonna change your situation, you know, and it, it is, it's me at the end of the day, so I need to be positive to get through it. Because if I stay negative, I'm only gonna stay where I am kind of thing. And I know mentally that I'm strong enough to get through something like this. For me, it's just how I come back from it, you know. It's, it, it has been a whole season, and I try not to look at it like that because I, I feel there's many more seasons to go from my career. So the main thing for me is, is just to get fit, but obviously it's very, very devastating. MacArthur goes in. It could be four here, but on hold! But relegation is confirmed for Hull City. Their fight is no more. It's very hard. The lads have obviously had it had it before, you know. And um, when I asked them about it, they didn't really take too well to it. But there's one thing that we know, and, and that is that we can get out of the Championship because you look how hard the Championship is now. There's the likes of Aston Villa, Norwich, who are teams that are, are massive. They're Premier League clubs and they're finding it hard to get out of the championship. But we know that's one thing we can do, and that is to get out of the championship. <laughs> I'm an ambassador of the uh, Malaria No More charity, which is amazing. It came about when my first story came out, when I moved to Hull, and when I asked them what the charity's about, and, and they, they put it all on the table, and I said, you know what, I wanna, I wanna try and put an end to this, because they, some of the facts they told me was, was frightening. Like, a kid dies every two minutes from malaria in Africa, which is, which is outrageous when, when you think about it. I went along to World Malaria Day and, and I spoke uh, briefly around the subject, you know, and um, I'm just trying to help, help charity put an end to this cause. Well, my mum had a legacy, you know, and she set her legacy aside for us. And when she did pass, you know, it, it was like that legacy just lived in us and we kind of lived she kind of lived through us, if that makes sense, because when she did when she did pass, we kind of thought we can motivate each other here rather than going down a path that many might have gone down, you know. I think she'd be very, very happy, you know, like she, 
it's all the effort, she, all the time and effort and the shouting that she put into us when we were growing up to tell us not to do this, not to do that, you know, and it's, it's all paying off now. It's just, it's just a shame that she's not here to, you know, to reap her rewards.